Trina, it's an honor for me. Thank you. Um, I'm in your hometown. Yes. Uh, to me, I like to think that I'm celebrating with you 20 years. Okay. Uh, and what I'm doing uh, is what we call self-made. Okay. And self-made is uh, the idea that you've done something truly unique and different and you've owned it. Okay. And for that, I first I want to cheers yes. to you. Thank you. So cheers Thank to you. you. Thank you. So take me back. Trina in grade school, high school, where do you want to go in terms of when did <laughs> what were you like and when did music become something of a core to you? I think grade school, high school, I was always a little extra, very popular. I came from a very popular family. So before music, just being in the neighborhood and just being around my community, everybody already knew who I was. Why is that? My mom owned one of the biggest and best beauty salons that was in Miami, Liberty City. She did the best hair. Everybody would come to her. So her salon stayed packed popping as they would say. Um, my stepfather owned a store that was directly like maybe two blocks over. So f when I grew up, I grew into this family that already had a name, that already was on the streets already, you know, solidified in the streets. Everybody knew who they were. It was Mr. Wonderful's daughter. It was Vanessa, the beauty show. Everybody kind of knew that. So I didn't even have a chance to like not have an identity. I grew up into this phase already. Were you, uh, out of curiosity, <laughs> were you a did you appreciate it at the time? Were you embarrassed that everybody knew who you were, um, that your parents did? I was. I appreciated it. I, I don't know if I understood it a lot. Yeah. I just knew that they were popular, and everywhere I would go, it's like you can't really get in trouble when everybody knows who your mom is, everybody knows who your stepfather is. So therefore, anything I did was kind of watched. It was cautious. So you were the known person, but you can only do so much because everybody's eyes is on you, watching you to make sure you made the right trip. I'm walking home from school, they made sure I got home, I got oh. to the salon. So I always had eyes on me all the time. Did, uh, uh, did they, uh, for, I guess, let me take a step back. Your brother and sisters, mm -hmm. did you have? Do you I have? have? Brother and a sister. Mm -hmm. were, were you guys all close? Super close. We all lived in one house. We all lived with my mom. My little brother passed away. My sister's still around. She does my hair. Um, we grew up in a tight family. It was just us, you know? My mom has five, four sisters, two brothers. So we kind of had a big family, all mostly women, and women were dominant. My, my aunt owned a bank. My mom and them had like a family of like entrepreneurs already. So everybody came up in this family that was already like a generating machine making. While I was in elementary, senior high, junior high school, you came up in a family that was already like in the streets that everybody knew, whether they were going to the salon to get their hair done, they was going to the store, they saw you here, they, everybody already knew. When I was a little, I wanted, this is a little bizarre, I wanted to be an architect. But I, right. I honestly thought that that was not for women. I thought it was like something that a man should do it was more structured for a guy. And I never really like pursued it because I thought it was like way out of my thing. But I'm, I was so artistic into wanting to say, hmm, Ma, well, I, I love our house, but if I was to build this house, I would build the pool this way. Yeah. I would build the stairs this way. I would do this. That was always my vision. I, I never did it, but that was just always, I always had something different to say than what I always saw. My vision was just way more extraordinary, you know? When did music kick in? Music kicked in really early because I always hung out early. We hung out at this teen disco, which was Luke's. It was this place called Pack Jam. So the Pack Jam is a place where, as a teenager, you're supervised, of course, but you go to this place that's open maybe, um, say, from 9 p.m. until, like, maybe 12, 31. This is 13 to 19 years old. Yeah, okay. this between, like, 13 years old to, like, 18. 19 okay. is kind of, you know, pushing yeah. it. But this is a teen disco. There's no alcohol. There's only, like, snacks, beverages. And we would go here for these hours, and you would just dance, party, have fun. Now, because it's Luke, he you know, huge in the music industry. He have artists, he has dancers, he had this whole thing like the dance machine. So when you at this particular place, people will have dance contests. So in the dance contest, that's what we really went to go see. Like all the dance off, all the girls versus the guys. So it was really interesting for us. Um, and that's when I just knew music was like a different thing. It was more powerful than, I mean, me, my mom and my family watched soap operas a lot. It was yeah. annoying. Like you, you have to be quiet when the soap operas is on. Everybody just, it's a shh. So for me, I didn't want to watch TV, you know? So going to the teen disco, it made us be more into music. I want to listen to music all the time. I put my headphones on, hear music, music, music. And I remember just hanging out at the, the Pack Jam, um, one of the dancers, which is one of my friends, they was like, we're going to go to the studio. Um, 
um, we're getting prepared to dance for Luke's video. It's your birthday. And they was like, hey, you guys come by. So we all went over and it was like maybe four or five o'clock in the evening. And Luke was actually, they were recording the song, It's Your Birthday. Mm -hmm. And I just remember me being in there and they was like, hey, go in the booth and say your name, Trina, it's your birthday. And I was just like, I'm not doing that. Like my mom was gonna kill me, like what am I doing? But it was, you know, we all kids were out there having fun and we did it and it actually worked and he used it on the song. So that was one of the things I was like, whoa. I mm -hmm. snuck in the studio. I went to hang out with you? some of the friends. I was like 15. Okay. I, I mean, I, I went to hang out. I mean, it's a studio, it was just us there, but these are the dancers. They dance for Luke. It's at a teen disco. This is not a teen disco. It's not, we're in the studio, private and personally, but they're there for a job and I'm just there to hang out. Yeah. So we just did it. And before you, I didn't, I didn't really think it would be such a big deal. You know, this is Luke. He's huge. Nobody's paying attention to my name, my what, one little what name. Did, what did you like about it? I like because the song was just really a fun song and it was just about your birthday. So everybody, all my, anybody have a birthday when this song come on, everybody goes yeah. crazy. So now that I done it, when the song come on, I'm literally a part of the song and I'm not even in the music industry. And you, you like the feeling of being, I like have an effect in the audience. You liked. I like the fact of that it was just fun. Like when we would go to the team disco to the pack jam, and when that song would come on, everybody knew it was me that said yeah. it. So they would be so excited, waiting for that one little part and yeah. gang up around me, like like huddling, like ready, yeah. like Trina, it's your birthday. So that kind of like started it out back yeah. then. You know, I was really young and started. I didn't take it as a career. I didn't take it seriously because I did a, my name, but I thought it was just something fun to do. So what what was the next stage for you? What was the next click? I think that, well, the next click was actually because me and Trick obviously are friends and when he calls me to come to the studio to do, to see if I would want to do um, the Nam record. But before, something must have, like, were you, were you into music? Were you writing lyrics? Were you oh, doing? No. It, after the whole Luke thing, it faded away. It was not a big deal. Okay. I actually did the video. Yeah. I snuck in the cameo of the video. and. I would still go to the club. I would still go to the teen disco. I was in school, so it wasn't a big deal, whatever. Um, I hadn't told my mom I did that either. It was just something fun to do. Sure. And then, you know, I graduated school. I moved on, and, and um, I just love music. You know, I love the women in music. I love watching videos. At this time, videos had started coming out, so it was really, really big. And, you know, just watching videos, it still hadn't put, like, that energy to say, hey, I want to do music. I want to, yep. Um, uh, so... Previous to that, just just love it, just having a love for the music, you know. There was this one time it was me, one of my best friends, and a friend of hers. We had formed this little group. We thought we was gonna do music, but we were young. We didn't we didn't know what we were doing. We just thought we took a bunch of photos. We were in the studio. We tried to make this record. If I think about it today, now it probably was horrible. But I don't know back then. In our minds, it was like Did you have a, good a group thing. name. Oh, I think it was called like the Fantasy Three Girls or something. Mm. It was just a weird little thing. We had met this guy and. Um, he was like, hey, I'm going to be your guys' manager. We're going to take these photos. We did this photo shoot, this whole thing. We had our outfits matching everything. And when I think about it now, it's hilarious because I really continue to do it. And my god sister, of course, she stopped doing music or whatever. But she was a singer. She could sing really nice. And she just looks at it now like, wow, do you remember we really thought it was going to be a group like yeah. so many years ago? And we just never, you know. But those little things are the things that get oh, you the next day. Of course. Did you think back then you could sing? Um, I, I didn't think too much of it, you know, because it was just fun. It, it, it was never a time where it was like a serious point of it. It was just like, oh, we're having fun. That's what we do. We get in the mirror. We get dressed up. We have a good, we got these girls. Let's have a good time. We didn't think about it career bound, yeah. so to say, when you think of it. So when did, so with Trick, when did that happen where, what did he see or what did, what did he hear? Um, for Trick, I believe he just knew I was feisty, you know. I went to school with Trick. I didn't really know him then. Trick was kind of considered off limits. He was like the bad guys. My girls that I hung out with was like really fly, beautiful girls. We had, you know, a lot of great energy. We didn't want to hang out with Trick. Like, you know, just the mean guy or just the over Did he know this at the time? Yeah, he was yeah. annoying. He knew he was annoying to us, but we were just all friends. So in passing, it would just be all cool. I think after the fact, um, because I was still in school, Trick wasn't in school anymore. He went to prison and it was just kind of, we had an estranged relationship after that. We kept in touch and then, I don't know, I think when he got out, he, he called me, he was like, hey, I'm gonna be at the studio, slip and slide, why don't you guys come by? And I was like, I don't think so. He was like, no, 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 I want you to do something. And I was like, what? And he was like, I just want you to do this record for me. And I was just in the car with my friend. I was like, Trick is bugging. Like, I'm on the phone muting him, like, Trick is tripping. And he, she was like, hey, let's just go by. It could be a good time. And we went, we actually decided to go by that day. And that's how the record You went with a bunch of girls. I went with like four girls, yeah. my best friend and like three more other girls. Yeah. Just to have girls around, you know, just to have a good time and kind of see 
you know, what he does in the studio for real. Because the time I went doing the Luke phase, it was a little different. You know, yeah. it's a little private studio. The dancer guys, these are my friends, so we're yeah. having a good time. Now it's Trick, and he's actually had already had a little success from the whole Luke project and doing his thing. And this is what he really wanted to do in life. Yeah. You know, I knew that for a fact. So to actually take him serious and go to say, hey, I just want you to talk on my record. That's what he said. I want you to talk on my record, like talk trash to me. You know, like just be the like the person that I knew you grew up to be the boss. Like coming from a, a very great family, um, and you don't really take no mess. So I just want you to display that on the record. So, so let stop there. I'm curious about okay. that. Okay. <laughs> For, for him to say, talk the way you are, mm -hmm. were you always like this? I just didn't play. Like, I'm very strategic with who I hung out with. I had a certain circle of friends. Um, I, I'm i just more of a, like, different per private person. You know, me and my friends, we hang out. We have the most amazing time. Um, and I always kept it tight in circle. Stay away from the drama. Stay away from anything that isn't making sense to me really trick knew that he loved that he loved, he knew that my girls wasn't messy there was a clique of girls that we hung out and we were all friends and we were honest and loyal to each other so he just knew if i bring myself these girls to the studio that's good energy you know and he just knew i didn't play but, about my friends anybody say anything about him, anything i'm going to be the person to step up he wrote the lyrics no not for my yeah. record he did now when i got to the studio now was just the hook, you don't know Nan. Yeah. So when I first got there, he was like, let me say it for you over the phone. But over the phone, there was no beat. It was just him, like, a cappella, yeah. just saying. And I was like, what does you don't know Nan mean? Yeah. And, you know, Trick is mostly live down south. So down south, they have, like, a different, they, their own slang. So Nan is basically like, you don't know Nan, no person, nobody, do nothing better than you. Whatever you do, you don't know Nan. You do that the best. And I was like, okay, it was, it was, it was funny. And that's how we kind of build up. So now I'm in the studio. So he's like, well, let me let you hear my verse. Because I still, I was like, I'll come by and see. I hadn't agreed yet to say I was going to do it. But this is somebody I know. He's cool. So I'm going to go by the studio and check it out. So now we're here and he plays the verse. And I was like, whoa. It was like, it was out there, yeah. you know. And, and this is me. This is the first time I'm in the studio. Now you want me to talk how you know I could talk. like. Yeah. I, I dated Trick's brother, so he know I don't play. I'm, yeah. I'm all about being honest and upfront. That's all I know how to be. So therefore, I hear these lyrics, I hear this record, I'm just like, whoa, bro, this is really out there. Yeah. This is a lot. And this is not my craft in yeah. music, so what do you want me to actually say? He's like, I just want, the, the content of the song is, I'm a guy, you're a girl, and I'm going to rep for the guys, but you got to rep for the girls, but you got to kind of like dominate me. So I'm thinking, do I have to rhyme? Do I got to this? I'm asking all these weird questions and we're just laughing. And so my girls is here kind of like egging me on. Like, you got this. Come on. We go in here. What are you going to say? This you going to say? You got to say stuff that's way worse than trick, way over trick. Like, you got to make the girls like crucify yeah, yeah. the guys. So that was the energy we kind of had built up in the studio. So I'm just in a huddle with my girls. We're in a huddle. And we're just talking. I'm just like, hmm, what do I do? I'm just saying stuff. I got this big old notepad and this pen. I'm just like, what am I actually saying or doing? Just think of trick. Think of trick. Bar for bar. Now you go in the booth and you go bar for bar with trick, but dominate him. Yeah. And that's exactly what I did. And that was the plan. Do you think that's carried forward in everything you've done? Of course. I think it was one of those kind of things because it's something that, I just went in blindsided and I, it wasn't about actually performing a per, the best verse. It was about giving him what he wanted. Like I could yeah. get in here and slaughter a guy. Like if you're going to talk this kind of crap to me, you don't, you don't want to understand what I'm going to say. Yeah. And it was kind of that. So I think when I, as soon as I done that, I think when I went into my first album, the label immediately went into that phase. Like we have to go in here with the domination. Like yeah. now this is Nan on steroids times yeah. two and we need this plus more because this is not just a one record this is a project and that's kind of how so it. after the song was released what happened for you uh, after the song was released um i went on tour with trick but before that okay. so you <clears throat> did, did you tell song. your mom you did the song no why didn't you tell her i don't know i didn't know what to expect because this is all new this is like yeah. a whole new before i did the song with trick i was on a whole new path i was about to do real estate that was my whole yeah. career I, I met this guy on this company, ERA Homeland Realty. He hired me as a job. I was super happy. Here's my my good first job. I'm ready to like sell like the biggest homes ever. And then Trick into you know came in with this whole idea. So I kind of paused. So now the record is done. He calls the owner of Slip and Slide Records, which is Ted. I know Ted. 
And Ted is like, no way, that's not Trina. I don't believe it. I'm coming over there. I'm on my way to the studio right now. Don't let her leave. And I'm just like, I'm getting out of here before Ted comes because I'm going to be put on blast. Oh, my God, he's not going to He's not gonna believe it's me. And I stayed. And he, it, it, was, it, was, it was a good and an annoying thing. It was good because he was so excited about the verse. He was searching for a record to be Trick single for his album. Yeah. This was the record. This yeah. was the record that landed us the deal to Atlantic Records. Yeah. But besides that, he could not believe that this was Trina, the person that I knew, I've known, I've seen out <laughs> and about in the clubs, having a good time. I don't know how to put the two to two. So now he has a separate conversation with me. Do I want to be an artist on Superstar Records? Absolutely not. I'm doing a favor for Trick, I'm leaving, good night. That was kind of how it happened. Cause I mean, this is Trick's career, this is something different. I was in the studio with this one verse for like seven hours. I was thinking, this is not what I want to do. This is taking way too long. I'm off beat. I got to say it over and over again. I'm a little frustrated, but I know it's new. So I, the producer, the, the engineer is working with me. So we kind of, the very first recording was the most difficult, honestly. And I learned so much from it, though. It turned me into like a beast afterwards. But did you, so the song, when the song, he wanted you even before the song was released? Yeah. Before Nan even came out to the world, Ted was trying to he sign saw it. something. He just knew I, he knew me. I was already popular. I was almost I was already really like famous to the world in the city of Miami before yeah. the whole explosion of Nan. So what happened when the song came out? Oh, God. The song came out August. Um, they were Isn't that neat that you remember the when I have to remember because these were the most like these were the most like the times of my life that was like they were on my back. They were calling every day. They were I changed my number. Who's they? Like the label, Slip yeah. and Slide, Ted Lucas. You got the people from Atlantic Records calling because now Ted is in transition. We're trying. Trick has, this is Trick's single now. They have an album, but we don't have the single. You pulled, you got Trina. We know who she is. This is magnificent. Atlantic Records want to know who is this person? Who is this girl? They're, everybody is calling my phone. I don't know these people, These the whole world. I want you guys to leave me alone. I only did a favor for Trick, a small little favor, me and my girlfriends. Now you guys has made this into a big, big deal. And it was like every day, email after text message, group chat, it became a little bit like scary, you know? Why, why though? Because that wasn't what I wanted want to do. I want never, that. I did one thing for Trick in the Suit as a favor. Yeah. I didn't want to expect to like now become the person that's gonna do a whole album. Yeah. Or the person that's gonna go in the studio and be recording every day and be, you know, doing this for like as a career. That wasn't the initial point of it. And I guess it happened so fast. You know, I know the song was done trick. Everybody in the studio loved it. Ross was there. The whole um, um, Trey Plus Six, everybody that was signed to the slide label was there. But to them, they're excited. Everybody's going crazy because these guys are in the studio day and night. Like, with no. Did, did, did they see. <clears throat> was it you? Was it the fact that you're a female? Was it. Like, I think because not because more of I'm a female, because it's Trina. They know me. Mm. They knew me already from this lifestyle of Miami. That, yeah. This girl comes from a family that's already like on the wave. Like, we can't even believe that you got her in the studio to come in here to do this record, you know? Yeah. And these are guys that are in here with their demos and their mixtapes and they're trying to get on. And I'm just looking at them like, you guys are bugging. In Miami, they know who you are. Yeah. You go to Tallahassee yeah. as an example. Yeah. Was it, sh were you shocked, surprised that people know who you are? <laughs> Tallahassee, well, Tallahassee is almost a little, yeah. I know it's Florida. It's Florida, but it's kind of like, okay, it's not too far from Miami, so everybody kind of know. But it was still, it was beyond overwhelming. Yeah. This is like the moon is super packed. Thousands of people are here. This is nothing like the little small club in Miami that was Trick's party. We did two shows. We do a club and we do like this thing. They had like some kind of festival that used to be like for the big colleges. Yeah. It was outside, field thing. Super packed. I'm talking about to capacity. So this is my first time performing actually on a stage that thousands of people, the whole college campus is outside. So now you went from this club to this big field and every single girl that's in school that I thought that would be studying for a lawyer or a doctor is singing now. I'm just confused at the point, like what's really going on? Can you appreciate today what they all of saw? Of course. What, which is what? I mean, confidence for yeah. sure. It was just one of those things that's confidence because when I look at today and I look back those years and I look at new artists, and I look at every artist that's come after that, it's just, you, you snipe some of my confidence to make yourself you know, because it's one of those things like 
I'm super confident. I'm not jealous. I'm not envious. I, if it's something I like, especially when it's women, I'm, I'm always uplifting because I come from so many women that are like that. Mm. The women that came to my mom's shop were beautiful. There was no jealousy. There was no cadence. These women have money. They have their own lifestyles. They all look beautiful. We're here just to look great. We don't care about what the next person is doing. We're not jealous. That's the kind of life I grew up. So when I saw this and I see women embrace me for that, it just made me be just like who I knew I always was. Did you enjoy being in music then? <laughs> oh, yeah. At first, it was a little bit of just it's just understanding it, sure. learning the business, trying to understand the difference of it. And it wasn't so much internet and it wasn't so much, you know, exposure as it is today. So it was a little secrecy kind of. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed it. I learned a lot. You know, it was a different learning because it was more private. So you got a chance to be one on one with people and kind of understand the business, understand, you know, your lane and what you need to do. And I learned a little differently. Today is just, it's all exposed. It's just open, you know? Do you remember listening to yourself for the first time? <laughs> yeah. What'd you think? Um, I thought it was funny. It was a little different, you know, because of course it's like different in the studio, different in going to Slip and Slide office and hearing the record actually being done, produced, mastered, all that. But then when it's on the radio and you're in the car for the very first time and you hear your voice, it just sounds different. Like to me, because now I can hear what I sound like. I mean, I don't know what I sound like, obviously, unless I hear it. In the studios, on a, my voice was very high-pitched, squeaky, everything. When I heard it on the radio, I was just thinking, like, wow, that's me. But this is the clean version, mm. you know? So if my mom hears it, cool, it's clean. We got to keep it from the dirty version, though. That's how I was trying to... I, I couldn't think of nothing else, really, at the beginning, except, but how can I keep her she's not really into the whole music thing but if she's in the car she has the radio on so if there's a radio station that's playing she's going to hear but because it's the clean version she don't know what all the beeping is so that kind of like smoothed it out so, so well, hold, on, hold on hold on you just covered it up your mom when mm -hmm. when did she first hear when did you when did you first tell her you're doing music well, I didn't kind of, I just told her, I was like, my, like, I did the record for Trick. Yeah. She was like, oh, what kind of record? I was like, oh, it was just a record. We were just talking junk back and forth, guys versus girls. Kind of like, he's the guy, he's the aggressor, but I'm the girl and I don't play. Like, I'm yeah. like Wonder Woman on the track. And she was like, oh, okay, I can't wait to hear it. Okay, cool, but I'm not going to let you hear it. But yeah. I said that. And, um, you know, it, it's out. It's out now. It's in the club. Everybody's playing, but it's a dirty. She don't go to the club. She's not going to ever hear it. So good. But then once it came on the radio, she heard it. Oh, it's, it's nice. But what is, why don't, why don't I know what you're saying sometimes? Because they keep making that thing beep all yeah, the yeah, words. Yeah. It's, it's like stopping everything you're saying. I don't understand what you're saying. And I was like, I don't know, you know, you know, because it's, you know, it's a little explicit and it's radio, it's rap, you know, it's different from R&B. So they have to put the beeps in. I kind of like, you know, kind of finessed it. And then um, she went for it at first, but then one, somebody, somehow, some somebody way, somebody played her the song. She got the real version that wasn't on the actual radio, and she was like, whoa, this is, where did you learn all this stuff? I was just like, my, it's music. My friends are doing it, trust me. I'm just trying to like re, you know, live their life vicariously. I just told her all kind of bunch of stories to make it, you know, sound good. Do you think, do you think you get the confidence from the fact that you didn't really want this? I think I got the confidence from the fact more just knowing that growing up, I saw successful women that had great jobs and yeah. had a lifestyle that was like my mom. I know what my mom do. I don't actually know what you guys do, yeah. but you guys admire her and you guys are fabulous to me. So from that point, it became like a self conscious thing of being independent and having the confidence of saying whatever you want to say yeah. and knowing that as a woman, you should be able to make your own like steps, like it shouldn't be, you know, swept up off your feet, taken care of by somebody, yeah. having no knowledge, having no understanding into life, how to survive and how to make it. And I think for me, that's all I saw was do, like- Do you think, when did, do you th looking back, mm -hmm. cause you can, and I try to do this a lot. Okay. Can you appreciate w how young you were and how quickly it happened? Now I do, you know, I think then I was just young. I didn't, I didn't really care, it didn't matter. I. The thing about me, I was, Trick Them was, they're guys. They were just all over the place, having fun, making music, doing after parties. It was girls, it was all kind of stuff happening. Me, I wasn't into that. I was just fresh from out of school. I wanted to do something else that was a serious job. Now I'm gonna do music. Now I'm gonna roll with a bunch of guys that I know that are my friends, but 
I don't even really know if y'all life is serious because y'all are all over the place. Yeah. But I'm not, I don't, at the time, I don't drink. I'm not in the clubs. I'm not doing after parties. I'm doing the stage and I'm in the hotel room. And now I'm trying to figure out how to write music because I have this guy in Miami, which is the label owner of Slip and Slide, saying when I get back, we're starting on your album. And I'm, I don't really understand what he's talking about. Yeah. So on my mind, it was a self-conscious thing of just focusing on, this is now, you you changed from doing real estate to doing music. So you have to transition into a different phase in life. And I kind of like start taking everything serious you know i'm still young but i'm on the road i'm away from home my mom's not here nobody's here to save me it's just me and these guys these guys are like loose cannons and i'm just the only one here sitting here like you know i got the stage i have my one verse and i get back to the hotel everybody's part and i'm just in the room by myself so what do you do you pull out your book and you start trying to figure it out what, see. Who back, who like janet you? jackson yeah. think everybody that did music that was a woman that was amazing salt and pepper like everybody that was women that had their own style their own hairstyle their own you know fashion statements I, I was intrigued by that you know so I always followed that so that part was easy all the posts in the magazines all that those are things I collected at home so my mom really knew I liked music but not to say I'm gonna take it serious as a career so I had to kind of develop that as I went and on the road with trick as soon as the record dropped as soon as I did the record and I agreed to do it I got signed to Atlantic Records that was like unheard of. I was totally confused at what was happening. Can you, uh, like, I, I just, I, I interviewed Rhapsody last mm -hmm. week, and I think she's great. Okay. I think she's great. Yes, okay. But I think what's amazing about her is, it's today people know who she is. Got it. More today than ever before. before. And mm -hmm. it's taken her 10 plus years. Yeah. Today we're exposed to the internet most, you know, social media, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, all this stuff, Facebook. Before it wasn't that, you know, so you had to, you had this big machine that was building and forming in your brand, your name. Now it's a little bit different to be able to do that. Um, but I don't, don't you think in some ways if the internet existed when you got started, you'd be just gigantic? Quickly, even more quickly than to, than now. Of course, yeah. I think I think because now you have a bigger platform. Me personally, I hate social media. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I think it's a good and a bad thing. It's like a gift and a curse. I think now though, the the success is quicker. Yeah. Can you see? Can you see using your example of the internet today? To me, artists today can come and go really quickly. Oh, for sure. But artists from before. Mm -hmm survive everything <laughs> they're a brand you're a brand yeah. it's not going anywhere i think it's it's because of that because of the brand i think and for myself it's just a, a fact of having solid fan a solid fan base of people that just love you no matter what or just want to see something from you they don't care what it is whether it's your lifestyle a, a new record a new car whatever they just adore you today it's like this. Like, so when people know, when people see you on the street and come up to you, what are they saying? We love you. We, we pray. Some of it, sometimes it's crazy. It's crying. It's screaming. It's like, I want to hug you so long. You saved me in this relationship. You got me through my divorce. You helped me out when I was breaking up with my boyfriend and all these, all this stuff. And I just be like, me? But they, and they'll go back to the exact song. And I just be like, oh my God, thank you. No, I, I get that every single day, everywhere. New album, please. Mm -hmm. Yes. New album is called The One. I'm excited. Um, it released this year, of course. I'm just excited. You know, it's just a new journey. It's a, a whole lot of evolving, a whole lot of growth with the album. Totally different from when I came out doing Nan with Trick. And I'm just super proud of that. It's the first time I've been on my own to do my own album, my own project, um, independent and through a different, through Sony Red. Um, I'm just excited about it, you know? Anybody want to work with? On the album, I've collaborated quite a few. I've done Kelly Price, I've done Tory Lanez, Kate Michelle, mm. um, just Dave East, Two Chains, just a couple of great collaborations. Um, and I'm excited. You know? Rick asked me if he if you'd be on if he could be on a song with you. Yeah. Well, is that possible? That's what he asked. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, he should call me and ask me. All so. right. So we, I'll, I'll see him for dinner. <laughs> oh, yeah, night, so we I'll should do sure that. You tell him I said Trina is waiting for that song. All right. <laughs> um, any, uh, you're you're a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. Business is important to Business you. What else do you have coming? I have Rockstar Music Group, which is my label. I have a couple artists signed, three artists, four, I believe. Um, I'm excited. I'm just excited for their projects. They're super phenomenal women. Um, I just, I love the sound. It's different, you know? Their struggles, their whole success story is different. All the all four artists are women? Yeah, they're all women. Why? I don't know. I just, I, I'm always giving back the whole women thing. You know, I have a couple guys that are trying to get signed to the label. We haven't signed them yet. 
I think they need to like do a little bit more work. You know, I, I, I know growing up in this industry with a male dominated industry, I, I know I've outdone most of the guys. So with this, I want to give back to the girls. I want to see what they can really do because God's going to do whatever they do. Well, uh, Trina, I'm a huge fan. Thank you. Um, you are beyond self-made because Thank you. you've been doing your own thing forever. Yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, to all your credit for what you've accomplished. Thank and you. Uh, I can't wait for the next album. And cheers to being truly yes. self-made. Cheers. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.